think y'all triggered now, wait till later, because I'm going to have a bunch of white men come up here and talk about how feminine you are, how much of a man you ain't. I'm going to have a bunch of white men come up here and talk about how feminine you are, how much of a man you ain't. She had a broadcast and it was a white man on there that she brought on. She brought a zaddy on and I think my name came. I didn't hear it. I didn't. I'm going to be honest. I didn't listen to it. I just kept hearing the cliff notes from different people. So the, the, the white zaddy was kind of disparaging black men throughout the whole thing, from what I understand. And she was sitting there agreeing with him. And from what I understand, the guy, he, people are saying he was a white supremacist or suspected white supremacist, just denigrating black men in particular. And she was sitting there co-signing um, this white man. And I heard my name came up. And I don't know what the context was, but I'm pretty sure it was something negative. But the fact that she's still... Her and Zaddy are mentioning me. Um, you know, of course, Zaddy is going to be mad. You know, I got the number one documentary film going in on white supremacist culture. So, of course, they're going to be mad. There's a lot of white supremacists mad. But when you have these bedwench mammies sitting up here co-signing them, and now Cynthia, from what I understand, but she, is she, she took a deep turn with the anti-black male hatred. I mean, she's going in on black males lately. I mean... She sounds like, you know, Stephen from Django with a weave. Oh yeah, Cynthia's a pathological liar. I don't really take, you can't take anything she says seriously. We don't really discuss her in a serious discourse. We don't really discuss her in a serious discourse. We don't really discuss her in a serious discourse. Let me play this video, ladies and gentlemen. Just a little snippet of it, and this kind of got her a little upset. Okay, so this is Cynthia. Cynthia, um, this is, we made a little dedication to you, Cynthia. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ha, huh. hold up. Not the banging. The banging. Oh, 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 oh. No, not the banging. The banging. Okay, so that's a little dedication to Cynthia. Synthetic G, she's an infamous black man hater. This woman despises black men. This woman hates black men with a passion. She makes videos about black men all the time. Cynthia is making all of these anti-black male videos. The conquered men, black men are dusty beta males and all this old shit. And y'all... Her, she's getting with all of the, the, the divest bedwinches, sitting up talking about how great Zaddy is. And we, I play videos of you admitting that you lay it with white men and you kick it with white dudes and all that because you are a little, little funky bedwinch. But listen, synthetic G, if white Zaddy is raising your value up so much, why are you broadcasting from a rent control studio apartment up there in Seattle? You got that little bitty ass, funky studio apartment up there in Seattle, little rent control apartment with secondhand Ikea furniture. Where's Zaddy? I thought Zaddy was doing all these great things. How come Zaddy has not gotten you out of that, that little struggle studio apartment that you live in? That's a very small apartment, Cynthia. That apartment looked like it smelled like singed hot comb smoke. It's a very small apartment, Cynthia. And Zaddy has not raised you up out of there. Why is that? I thought Zaddy did so many magical things, dear. What's going on? That little bitty ass apartment. I don't even think that shit has a kitchen. She has an electric hot plate and a George Foreman grill. And she used the George Foreman grill to heat up her hot comb. My God. Uh, you, you, the struggle is real, Synthetic G. I mean, I thought Zaddy was supposed to be doing all these great things, and the black man is the dusty beta male. <laughs> now, at one point, I gave Cynthia money for a new bayang. I gave her some money for a new bayang. 
I know you're listening, Cynthia. I PayPal'd her. I PayPal'd her $100. I told her, look, step your game up, at least get you a new Bayang. And I PayPal'd her $100, and she shamelessly took that $100. But instead of upgrading her Bayang, her ignorant ass went and got a matching synthetic ponytail to go with the fucking Bayang. Like, God damn, this is a raggedy bitch. I know the struggle is real, Cynthia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know it's real. Cynthia, you're walking around. You still got that mortuary makeup on. <laughs> Looking like a dead hoe from the 1800s who got reanimated and brought back to life. <laughs> you a century old hoe who died after the Civil War. <laughs> you got killed in the Civil War. And they brought your ass back to life. <laughs> she was working at a whole house in the 1800s. <laughs> and got hit by a stray bullet during the Civil War. <laughs> and she got on the same mortuary makeup. <laughs> but Cynthia, look, at least Cynthia, with your fucked up bagang, at least branded. You should, Cynthia, what you should do. Because I'm a very good person at marketing. I'm very good at marketing, Cynthia. What you can do, since your bayangs are clearly attached to those headbands you wear, you should come out with um, your own headband bayang. Call it um, <laughs> bayang go bye bye. <laughs> so, people who cannot, if you don't have time to put a lace front on, put on a bayang go bye bye and just go on about your business. Just throw that shit on and go on about your damn business. I mean, market your shit. I mean, look, be creative. Your lace fronts and your bayangs are clearly attached to them headbands. And if I were you, I would market that. Use that as a marketing strategy. That's a new thing. Just own up to it. Like, look, <laughs> bayang go bye-bye is for the women on the go. That's what you need to do. No edges needed. We can do infomercials. Tired of fixing your hair to go to work in the morning? Get Bay Ango Bye Bye. Just strap it on with the headband and leave the house. Thanks, Bay Ango Bye Bye. Again, I, I sent her money to get a new Bay Yang. And I'm like, next time I just buy her a Bay Yang. I just have to buy it. But the problem is, she keeps changing her hair color and. It's hard to find bayangs in the color she chooses. I think she has some kind of hookup overseas. She has all types of colors that bayang colors that's not even out over here yet. She has honey mustard bayang, dirty auburn bayang, midnight magenta bayang. Some of them shits. I went to Sally's Beauty Supply. They're like, we not have. We special order. Do you know Cynthia G? They knew you by name. Oh, so you are familiar with those colors. <laughs> so yeah you, you hooked up with a wholesaler somewhere in Malaysia where you can get those those lace fronts and those bayangs in different colors your ass is too flat and your shoulders are too husky okay you built like a transgender weightlifter I can't get with you you look like you're about to lift weights for the damn Olympics you're going to be lifting weights for Kenya or Ghana. You're going to be lifting weight for Africa somewhere. You're going to have on a kente cloth headband with your bayang strapped to the kente cloth. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm not trying to get with you, Cynthia. Because, again, I don't want to hit that and that wig come off. We, I don't know what type of patches of hair you got under that damn wig. I know if your wig fall off, your scalp probably looks like kangaroo fur. I don't want to see what it looks like, sweetie. It would never work, Cynthia. And you can't be a lesbian. You can't go that route because you can't be out here eating pussy with that synthetic bayang going down on a woman. You do that, you're going to fuck around and give somebody a urinary tract infection with them synthetic strands on your bayang. You can't do that, dear. You just will not get rid of that goddamn bayang. You had that bayang for 30 years. I think I saw some school pictures of Cynthia G with that same fucking bayang in the fifth grade and 
she was wearing that bayang and the strands were coming loose and the other kids were tripping on the playground over her synthetic weave strands. You know them strands are very slippery. A little boy misplaced his hip. He had to get a pediatric hip replacement because he slipped on Cynthia G's wig strands in the fifth grade. Poor little fella. They had to, the school got sued because of your synthetic bayang, Cynthia. You understand? But Cynthia, I will not get with you, Cynthia. You keep I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna keep mentioning Cynthia. I'm not gonna keep mentioning Cynthia. I'm not going to mention you, Cynthia. I'm just saying this, you know, because I I heard you and Zaddy was talking crap. But look, I'm out here vacationing and I know you wish you were out here in Costa Rica vacationing with me too, Cynthia. I know you wish you were here. But that that would never work, Cynthia. Even if I even if I wanted you at my as my side piece, I couldn't bring you out here to Costa Rica. Not with that bayang strapped to that cheetah skin headband. A jaguar might think that you're an enemy and try to mate with you or something. I don't know. There's wild animals out here. I can't bring you out here with that that bayang sitting on your head, that funky wig sitting on your head, Cynthia. I can't bring you to the jungles of Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, some animals might think that a dead howler monkey fell on your scalp and they might attack both of us. I can't do that, Cynthia. That just wasn't, that, that, that wouldn't work for me. That wouldn't be conducive of the kind of relationship I want, dear. But, I, you know, whatever. Cynthia is always going to mention me because she she wants daddy. She wants black daddy, but black daddy don't want her, so she has to go kiss up to white daddy. So, that's what it is. You know, the bedwinches are going to bedwinch and the bedwinches are going to babble. So, I'm not even tripping on them. I'm not tripping on them. 